Hello and welcome back to the Greatest Attorney 2 Resolve, where last time... Wait... <laughs> last time, we began case 4 of the game, where we started off pretty normal, you know, I just having a casual conversation at the at the hotel with with Judge... What's his name again? I, 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 I only call the judges judges up until this point, I've never actually referred to them by, the, by a name. Judge Jikogu, that's what it is. I've always just called the judges, you know... Judge, I'm not used to the judges having names I have to remember, so we talked with Judge Jikogu and Sutato's father, and but then then we came back to the to Sholmes's suite, and we we met the, the we, we met the red hair brigade of which Sholmes apparently tried to join, and now we're we're on a quest to solve the the, the mystery of the disappearance of Daily Vigil, uh, who was the husband of the second juror from the last case, Evie Vigil, who we have to find, who was the former chief of warder of the Barclay Prison. Pleasant prison, Barclay Prison, which just so happens to be the prison which was involved in the last case we were talking about with the with the with the professor's murders, but also in involving the cemetery right behind it. So I'm not sure what's waiting for me when I go over to when I press move and then go to prisoner governor's office. But uh, let's just oh, since I was excited about visiting the prisoner's governor's office, joy. I'm what 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 fun times await us. I can't wait. Let's just go. I- I'm a little nervous about what's awaiting us over here, but I guess I don't know way to find out. Why are we- okay, odd that we're- we've- we've left- we, okay, whatever. Barclay Prison is on the outskirts of London, backing onto a lonely burial ground. It's four- it's four high outer walls loomed quietly before us in the fog. Having requested a meeting, we were shown to the governor's office in the watchtower. I don't think you need to remove Rinosuke's name for the- Oh! Oh, oh, oh joy! Oh, lovely. First thing we see. Or at least the first thing I saw when I walked into the room is a little mechanical toy guillotine in the corner that's just constantly looping. Oh joy! D doesn't everyone? Don't you have that in your office? That's what? Isn't that just a staple of, of the everyday office? What a lovely thing to spot. Oh, oh, you look friendly. This place is full of hardened criminals. I tend to remember the last time a civilian was down here. And you didn't want to talk an inmate, but to me. Yep, you're about exactly how I pictured you'd be, as the- Do you know who I am? I'm the Governor Barry Katie- hmm? Oh, yes, it's a pleasure. I'm Rino Skinner Hoda, defense lawyer. And an Easterner, I see. Does that mean- Yes, I'm a visiting student of law from the Empire of Japan. Japan? Did you say Japan? Um, yes? Well, there's no any of your kind in here, laddie. Maybe you should try the prison next door, eh? I didn't notice any other prison next door, sir. <laughs> anyway, oh, I didn't. I wait. I was. I was too busy laughing. I. I didn't press A there. I, I. I swear, I didn't press A. That was the game progressing the dialogue by itself. I was too busy laughing. I couldn't read in time. Okay. Anyway, we came to ask you some questions about. I didn't like to be. I don't like to be so direct, but. I have no intention of speaking with the likes of you suspicious looking Easterners. Well, I'm sorry your racist ass can't talk to us for more than five seconds, except that- But I, I'd also point out that you are doing that right now. You're talking to us right now. So what's a few more seconds of your time gonna- gonna bother you? I don't- Now get out of my hair. It, so as soon as he finds out that we're from Japan, he reacts like this. That surely means he's racist. I think it's because of the professor case. Oh. You're far more generous than I am with my assumptions. You think so too? Ten years ago, Genshin Osogi, also known as the Professor, was in incarcerated at this prison. And then, after his execution, he apparently re-emerged from his grave in the cemetery behind the prison. I, I might have known. You're sniffing around about that case, aren't you? You're agents, eh? Ain't part of the Professor's great web, no doubt. No, 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 not at all. We're just get gone with you before I punch your legs out. What? We're going, we're going. Clearly the ghost of that kid still haunts this place. We're not going to get anywhere here. Unless we can somehow prove to this man that there's nothing suspicious about us. Okay, how do you how do we how do you propose we go about doing that? Governor Caden, what are you thinking, Mr. Sato? I feel sure that name came up in a conversation recently somewhere. I was wondering if whoever mentioned it might have some ideas to help us. Come to think of it, I have the same feeling. Do, okay, do we need to do 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 we need to do we need to go drag Do do we, we need, do we need to go drag your father down here? With us and get his word, get his word of to get his word of approval. It's like, hey, let us in. Oh, speaking of whom, you're just chilling right here. I'd have thought you'd have been chilling up in your room, but I guess I guess you really must hate your. I guess you really must hate Judge Jigoku. Did I get it right? This Jigoku? No, Jigoku. Uh, close enough. Uh, I, I, you must really hate your roommate if you're chilling down here. 
That's Professor Mikotaba over there. Although you'd think it'd be the other way around. Ah, hello, you two. I was just taking a moment to catch up on the world now that I'm unpacked. But where's Judge Jikogu? Yeah, he's not the relaxing sort. He's taken himself off to pay his respects to all the legal bigwigs. Yeah, having only just arrived in the country today? Goodness, he is full of energy. Um, Professor, you mentioned something before about how you'd known the prison governor at Barclay Prison. Oh, Governor Caden, you mean? So it is the same man. Father, we must speak with the governor. And you kind of owe me after that 16-year abandonment thing you did yesterday. I mean, what? I didn't say anything. But he refused to talk to us. He said we were suspicious Easterners. And remember, you owe me big time after that shit you pulled 16 years ago. Well, I'm sure if I accompanied you, it would be a very different story. Oh, would you? That would be wonderful. <coughs> I said, I had to choke down. I had to really cough up those words. If you have time now... Sadly, as you can see, I'm very busy at the moment. Yeah, oh, but yeah, busy sitting on your ass reading a newspaper. How busy you can be. Busy drinking coffee in a comfortable set. Set, whatever. Now, now, I have rather a lot to prepare for tomorrow, you know. Oh, sorry, I didn't say that out loud, did I? You Miku Tabas are alarmingly good at reading people's thoughts. Or could it be that you and our are alarmingly bad at hiding your thoughts? <laughs> Let's not fall out now, I have an idea. Oh, great, the big one, he's got an idea. What's he writing on that piece of paper? Here's a letter of introduction for you. Hopefully when he sees my name, he'll change his tune. Ah, thank you. The letter of introduction has been entered into the court record. Yeah, I had a feeling we'd get something like that. Good luck, then. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you continue with your... <clears throat> busy work, or whatever you call it. But we're gonna get some actual work done, if you don't... If you don't mind. So we are going to... Alright, let, let's try this again. Take 2, new and improved edition. Present letter of introduction. Let us through, you big lug. If you just cast your eyes over this, Governor Caden. What's this then? You you can pull the wool over our eyes, you good for nothing Japanese student. Mikotaba? That. That young jock from the forensics laboratory? That Mikotaba? Yes, exactly, him! Oh dear! Perhaps I should have said something sooner. I'm Eugene Mikotaba's daughter, Susato. Jinx? You're the young man's daughter? The one he abandoned? And you didn't think to mention that before? I... do apologize. Aye, right, well, you best take a seat then. Can I offer you a cup of tea, perhaps? As if you didn't just say the things you said five minutes ago? Okay. And don't forget to try one of the wee handcuff biscuits. Handcuff biscuits, okay. Your father's influence is nothing short of amazing. If not a bit terrifying. I'm barely regretting not announcing who I was from the outset now. So then, what can I do for you, Hen? Well, we're currently investigating a case. It's one of your warders, you see. He's gone missing. Missing? Yeah, that's right. It should have been reported to you as well, being the prison governor. I haven't heard nothing of the sort. There's no missing persons in my prison. Oh! Well, that's just wrong. But how can that be? It's Mr. Daily Vigil, your chief warder. Eh? Vigil? That's right, his wife came to us and asked us to investigate his disappearance. Let's skip the part about him only going missing yesterday for now. Clearly that means something to him. Would you be so kind as to tell us what you know, sir? Aye. Aye, of course. Okay, so before we talk to him, this is this has nothing to do with anything right now, but I feel like it's just worth mentioning. Um, something that I kind of like, that's a really minor detail that probably would only matter to me, is I kind of like how the soundtrack's been 100% consistent throughout the two games. Because one thing I pointed out, uh, when I, when I did my Justice for All Let's Play two years ago, was that the soundtrack had changed between the first game and the second game. And it, it didn't end up being that big of a deal because I ended up liking the, the uh, Justice for All soundtrack as well, and I liked Trials Relations soundtrack. But it was just kind of jarring because I, I, after five cases, one of which was eight hours long, <laughs> Uh, I kind of, my, my brain kind of became accustomed, it, like, it linked the, such things like the courtroom lobby theme to the court begins theme, to the objection theme, the pursuit theme, cross-examination, telling the truth, logic and trick. I, I kind of linked all those things in my head, like, I associated them with certain things happening in the game. So when I heard the new soundtrack, I was like, huh, I'm just, I'm just not used to this, you know? And pe people were, pe like, people were talking about how it was, I've, I've, it, it was weird that I was talking about the soundtrack. I was like, I, I, I don't know, man, I, I just... I just kind of got used to the first game soundtrack, and it was weird. I felt it weird that it was changing. Uh, but this this time, the soundtrack is 100% consistent across both the first game and the second game, which I think it might, oddly enough, be equally as jarring because now I'm so used to each game having a unique soundtrack. But 
I, I definitely, it's nice to, to, like, for instance, the reason why I, I thought to bring this up was because of this investigation theme right, right now. I, we've been hearing this since the second case of the first game, so it's nice to have that kind of consistency. Same thing with the objection theme, but uh, obviously suicidal, suicidal's objection theme is, is different because different attorney, different theme. But, like, the Pursuit music, Pursuit music hasn't changed at all, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's just part of the course. So, I guess we'll be hearing that for, uh, throughout the rest of the game, as well as the same objection music and all that, so it's kind of, it's kind of nice to have some consistency for a change. Uh, random, that, that, that's my, there's my tangent for the day. Anyway, let's talk about how you're wrong about how he's gone missing. We understand that Mr. Vigil is the chief warder here at the prison. Aye, that he was. Strong sense of responsibility and dedicated to the job, no doubt about it. Sorry, did you say was? He was a fine warder. Aye, he does, he does not work here no more. He left the job. Oh. Huh, oh my. Well, I guess, I, well, I guess he's not technically wrong then. That's an interesting... What was this exactly? There's a question. When was it about? It can't have been much less than... 10 years ago. Oh, what? Um... Um... Uh, Eve, Evie? You, you've, um... You and your husband have some... When we eventually find him, you do have some things to, to talk about. You, he's... He's been... This is this is exactly like a stolen turnabout. This is exactly like a stolen turnabout. It's one for one the same thing. Where um where what's his name? Ron's Delight was lying to uh like he was so ashamed about because he, he got fired and he didn't want he, he because the whole thing was like he saved the way they met is that he saved her from a pair of robbers or whatever, and she was like, I I hate criminals or whatever. So he didn't want to tell her once he got fired, he didn't want to admit that because then obviously she'd be in on the the crimes she she, she 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 he feared she might dump him because he was he he he, he was stealing things and he, and he didn't want her to know that and, and all that uh so and then in the end they became like a little didn't they form like their own little crime spree duo thing at the end or something like that i i, I didn't i didn't pay much attention to the epilogue because i was just so engrossed in like weeping tears from the from the ending of that game but i feel like it was some it was something similar to that it was like because her whole thing was that she doesn't care about the criminal aspect. It was, it was the lying aspect of it. Like, as long as he was honest about it, that was, that was the part of it. And how he he announced definitively that he's the one who's stealing it, so she was fine with it or something like that. So it, it, it's kind of the same thing here, where you, you either you lied to us, which is also a problem, or your husband lied to you about where he's been working the past 10 years, which is equally as much of a problem. In fact, probably more of a problem, because that's lying between spouses as opposed to you lying to me. Which is a bit of a different matter. So, um, uh, you got. When well, we eventually find this man, assuming we don't find him turning up dead, which hopefully not. He, although, given its attorneys, someone has to die, right? Like, there's no. It's gonna be a murder case. So, someone's gonna die, so we're probably gonna find his body dead. Whatever. But if we find him alive, you got some things to work out. Let me tell you. What? T -t 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 Ten years ago. Also, goes without saying, ten years ago. What a coinky dink with other dates that we know of. Did he stop working here ten years ago? Aye, as I mind it. Do you know who then? I haven't, I haven't heard the fellow's name in all that time. As a worry if he's gone missing, though. But, but Mrs. Vigil made no mention of it. I think perhaps, Mrs. Naruhodo, that his wife simply doesn't know. I think she's unaware that he no longer works here. Governor Caden, can you tell us what happened? Why did Mr. Vigil give up his job here? That's important, is it? Y yeah, a little bit. I believe it may be. What are you thinking, Mr. Naruhodo? I can't help wondering, given that it was ten years ago. Ah! Which was exactly when the professor was being held at this prison. Yeah. I, um... Hmm. Not a great date. Not a great year for someone to go missing. I gotta, gotta be honest. It's uh, not a great year for someone to go missing. So, Mr. Vigil actually resigned from the position of Chief Warder ten years ago? You I'm, that guillotine in the background is so distracting. What happened to make him leave the job? Like, it's almost comically cartoonish to have here. In actual fact, he didn't leave the job willingly. He had no choice in the matter. You mean he was dismissed? Hmm. I wonder why that- I wonder why that might be. And it was after a particular walk. Sorry, a walk? Aye. That's a word for it in here. Walk to the gals. Yep, that's what I thought. It, it has to do with the execution. He- he- he messed with things that people didn't want to mess with and then they canned him. It's the job of the chief warder to prepare the gallows tree and oversee an execution, you see. Only. They jumped at something unthinkable on that last walk he was manning. What did he do? I'm sorry, but I can't reveal that information. So it, it's either that he orchestrated the 
the the the fault the faulty execution and helped with Doctor Scythe, or he saw what Doctor Scythe was Doctor Scythe was doing, and then they canned him because he they didn't want him to get the word out or whatever. But I can tell you that it's very rare for a chief warden to be relieved of his post. Why why wouldn't Mrs. Vigil know about it? She appears to be under the impression that her husband. Well, Ryanosuke, if the only line of if the only line of communication she has with this prison is through her husband, and her husband, how, how do you think she wouldn't know that? To take a shot in the dark, I wonder. I wonder if there's maybe some. If there's only maybe one person in the whole world that could that is communicating with her about the state of the prison, and therefore, if he chose not to tell her anything, she wouldn't know. I wonder. I wouldn't care anything about that. I wouldn't care anything about that. I'm afraid. Can you perhaps answer one more question about the circumstances of his dismissal? And what would that be, Han? Uh, that last execution that Mr. Vigil was responsible for overseeing. Was it by any chance the professor's? My faults exactly. I'm sorry, I really am. But I'm at no liberty to answer that. If the answer was no, you would have told us. So the answer is yes. I see. Okay, well, this just got a lot more challenging. My father came to Britain all those years ago in order to study forensic medicine. But you seem to have been well acquainted. The dead room, the prison, and the cemetery have a lot to do with one another. After all, they need fresh corpses for forensic research, do you know? Yes, I can imagine. But the advancement of medical science isn't always particularly palatable. Your father worked in the laboratory just on the far side of the graveyard, in the basement of St. Sinners. It's still in use today. St. Sinners. That's come up for I'm sure, yeah, it's a place where Olive Green was staying. Yes, that's right. We've been there. You and Todd and I have to have, to, have used to ride in a carriage together and negotiate terms. A more fresh material, I suppose. Aye, and we used to sit in here for hours and gab on about dissection and uh, all sorts. Ooh, takes me back. Over a pot of tea and a plate of cup biscuits, of course. How charming. He was a good fellow, your father. Reliable and dead set in his work. <laughs> the latter, maybe. The former, the two former things being the good fellow and the reliable. We have receipts to the contrary. But I'm afraid. I'll never understand you, Japanese. Because of Genshin Asogi, I suppose? Well. I can tell- I cannot tell you anything else. Thank you so much for your time, Governor. Oh, one moment before you're away. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Whatever this is, you should have given it to us immediately. Ah, found it. Here. Take this as a wee souvenir of your visit to the prison. What is it? Ah, yes, that's what, I, that's what I've always wanted. A souvenir of a, of a trip to a prison. That's Vigil's dismissal notice. It's ten years old now, of course. Yeah, I pro probably should have given this to us earlier. Oh my! Are you sure? Aye. It's no trouble at all. It's no- it's not the original, mind. The harsh reprimand incurred by Mr. Vigil ten years ago that resulted in him losing his job as Chief Warder of Barclay Prison. Alright, step one. Read the damn thing. Okay. June 25th. Hey, that's the same date as I released the final episode of The End of My Sanity. Chief Warder Daily- oh dear god. Chief Warder Daily Vigil is relieved of his post with immediate effect for having violated Clause 132 of Her Majesty's Code of Conduct for Prisons. All rights to redundancy pay and other financial benefits are fully revoked. Reason for dismissal. Aiding and abetting the escape from this prison of conflict. Professor, just prior to Okay, so... So it's not... Okay. So it's not that he discovered that Dr. Size was up to something, was up to something shady. It's that he incurred the something shady to get him... To br help him break out. Okay. That suddenly... Suddenly that gets a lot more... Okay. Details of this escape are still being investigated. Full cooperation with the great increase will be expected. And for the final page, additional notes. Indications out that the jailbreak plot was conceived prior to the convict's incarceration. It's believed that the convict engaged in some form of negotiation with the prison staff in order to secure assistance. Full disclosure of information regarding these negotiations will be demanded. Okay. So, we knew, we knew it had to be one of those two. It was either that he was, that, that he was helping the professor be saved from execution, like ghost trick style, Except that the ghost trick one was in service of the truth, whereas this one was not. Or it was the or it was the opposite, where he was he discovered that this darkest side was trying to stall the execution, and then he's, he tried to do something bad and it got canned. We know it's the former now, so at least we know which one it is. It had to be one of those two. Well, in return, that uh, what do you want? 
Do me a favor, never come back here. The case is closed. Yeah, it's not happening. I, I, I had a feeling you were going to say, in return, never come back here again, and then it's like, yeah, it's not going to happen. Well, I think we got to return to Baker Street for the time being. Yes, I agree. We need to report back to Mr. Sholmes of what we found out about Mr. Vigil, because Lord knows he's not going to do jack shit about any of this. What would he tell Mrs. Vigil, I wonder? That he did all the work, probably? I, I, I expect no less from him at this point. Okay. November 1st, Sholmes is sweet. We're back! Hello, you two. Oh, that's not what I- okay. I have wrong voice. I thought you'd be back before, before long, so I baked some scones for us all. Oh, so that's what the delicious smell is. That <laughs> is blue now! Why is your hair blue? <laughs> Why is the hair blue? Okay. okay, remember when I made that joke about how we had Markiplier hair now? Wasn't it a thing for a while that Markiplier kept changing his hair color? Like it went from, was, wasn't it, was it blue at one point? Am I imagining that? Didn't he have blue hair at one point? Because the first time he, he, he dyed it pink, because to match like the wharf sash thing or whatever, along the same time that Jack said the guy dyed his hair green, and I'm, I swear to God he he dyed it blue as well as what was it yellow? I think I think I I might, I might be going crazy with the yellow one. I I know it was blue. I know it was pink. I know it was like a magenta style, and then it settled on red before going back to normal. Was there a yellow one too? I don't know. Point being, he changed his hair a lot. Then that was a joke last time when I said that he had Markiplier hair now. It's just, it's just that again. He's just going through the stages. He's just going through the stages of Markiplier's hair. Why do you keep ch is, is there is there a blue hair brigade now? Is is there is there a brigade a br 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 is there a brigade for every color of hair or every shade of? I okay, Shams. I oh my god. What? I swear to God, if there's a blue hair brigade, I'm gonna break something. You've returned a good deal sooner than I was anticipating. Um. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Hello, Mr. Sholmes? Say nothing. Your thoughts are written all over your faces in any case. Yeah, it turns out that it may have been advisable to test my hair color restoration tonic before application. Oh my! Pray tell me, what of our word of friend? Have you garnered some new information? Oh, um, yes. Something very surprising, in fact. Though it's not a patch on your hair, to be honest. It most certainly isn't, but still, we discovered the s Um... No! Oh, hey, hey, Gina! What are you doing here? Stop everything, Shames! This is more important! Gina? Oh, she- Oh, God, she's taking the hat off. Uh, I- I can't- I don't believe it! Gina, what's going on? Gina? What's happened? She took the hat off. That means it's serious. Clearly a very grave matter, indeed. For Miss Lestrade made no mention of my hair whatsoever. I... <sighs> yeah, because that's what should be on your mind right now. It's... it's the boss. What do you mean, Inspector Gregson? What what happened to Gregson? The boss is... he's... He... What?! No. No. You, you, no. I don't believe it. No. You're lying. They... I just found his body! Shot with a f No. You no, no that that didn't that did not happen. No. No, I no. You you can't you cannot You can't be si but, but Inspector Gregson! He was murdered? No, not Gregsy! Come in, my dear girl. Tell us the whole story. What but but he was but he why you what? I, 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 I need a minute to think. I, what is happening? They killed off Gregson? What? First I walk home, I come home and show his blue hair. Then a minute later, I see Gina take her hat off, which never happens. And Gregson, what? What? He's dead. I. I could never have called this. No chance in hell I could have ever. Okay. Remember in, Ry in, in Rice in the Ashes, 
when it was revealed that a detective had been murdered and my immediate thought was, oh, I swear to God, don't let it be Gumshoe. And then I was relieved when it wasn't. That was back when I thought that they had the guts to kill off a detective. Then I learned, ah, detectives are safe. Gumshoe won't, Gumshoe won't die. Fulbright won't, well, this is Fulbright, well, probably doesn't count. But you know what I mean. Emma Sky is immortal. D detective Gumshoe is immortal. Etc, etc. They're all impervious to damage. Apparently not Gregson. I... I guess those fish and chips were too much for him. I mean, I... I, I think I just, like... I think shell shock is the term. Like, I'm, I'm, my brain actually isn't digesting the information correctly. It, it's, it's like... The, the information is coming in like Gregson is dead now. My brain's rejecting. It's like no, that doesn't. That doesn't. That can't be. You didn't. Like at least it didn't kill off someone I had a deeper connection to. But still, like he, he was kind of an asshole initially, and he was a groveling around like a freaking puppy dog whenever Iris came into the room. But he, he still he still helped us. So we, we have a we have a missing person and we have a dead detective. What what else what, at, at this point what else can happen? Like at this point anything goes. That's the thing. At this point Gregson's dead. We're dealing with a missing persons case. It's all linked to the prison and the cemetery. We the, the person we're trying to find lied to her, her, her who her, his wife who in turn gave us false information. You are probably lying about what happened with Kazuma. You probably knew about the whole thing. We had st at this point, anything goes. D and d details now, please. Are you serious, Gina? Inspector Gregson was he was really shot. Uh, I don't know much about what happened myself yet. It's still there, investigating the scene. Where did this take place? A little rented room in a building full of flats on Fresno Street. The outskirts of town, no one near his home. He was perhaps investigating a case then. The, the thing is, no one at the yard knows nothing about no case around there. Oh, how strange. The, the boss was. He was so good to me. I know I ain't up to much yet, but one day I was gonna show him. I was gonna show him I'd become a proper detective. Oh, Ginny. I. And the thing is, you believe it! You believe it because he took because he took her under his wing, with the with, with the with Shom's blessing or whatever. And Gina was trying to. She didn't. Ah! This isn't. You're, you're not allowed to do the semi game. Like it obviously would have been worse if you had ripped away Gina herself or any of the other characters I actually care a significant great deal about. But it's like. Like, this would act, for, for comparison, to understand, like, you may think I'm overreacting here, but for comparison's sake, like, obviously he's not Gumshoe. Gregson was not Gumshoe, he was never gonna be Gumshoe. But the shell shock I'm experiencing right now is akin to if they had killed off Gumshoe in the penultimate case of Trials and Tribulations. That, like, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't jive with me in my head. It's kind of, it's kind of like... Because with Kazuma, like, that happened immediately. And it's the same thing with Mia Fey, which happened in the first game. It's like, okay, you're doing that immediately. Like that. That's, that's a gutsy move, but it's still it's still early game. But this is late. We're, we're approaching the finish line. If this is, this is like, approaching the end game. And they have the guts to do that now? Like, at this point, no one's safe. I don't even... Jesus. So who did this? Do you want to who the culprit is? They got him already. I don't believe that. Already? They've caught the shooter so soon? A uh, witness report something's going on. The boys got straight down there and took care of him. Who? Who? What awful person did this? I still can't believe it myself. Gina? It was the Reaper. So, the actual Reaper or Von Zeke's? Because it's not the latter. But wait a minute. You don't mean they arrested Lord Von Zeke's for it? No, nah, that. The, they did. What? What? What is happening? What is going on? I, I, t I told you. Anything goes. Anything goes at this point. Nothing's off the table. What is that? What? 
That's... Honestly... Because you know damn well that we're going to end up defending him. That's actually not a half bad way to call back to the first game. Defending the prosecutor you rival with the whole, the whole, the whole game so far. But... That doesn't... Literally anything goes. No one's safe. No one in this game is safe anymore. They're all, they're all doomed. They're all destined to die now. I can't... It's been... Gregson's dead. We're still trying to find the missing person who lied to his wife, who then gave us false information about the prison. I, and then now we're defending Von Z. I mean, we, we're not defending him yet, but you know damn well, of course, we're going to end up defending him. I can't. What is happening? What? Can this game give me a break for like a minute? No, no Von Zeeks? What the what? What is happening? Are you quite sure, Miss Lestrade? My immediate thought when she said the Reaper was, okay, so not Beric Von Zeeks, but they caught, like, the actual Reaper, the person who would actually be going around doing all this stuff, because it's, it, if the Reaper actually exists, it wouldn't be Von Zeeks, so I thought they were gonna be like, ah, oh, we've caught the real Reaper, but no, they just dropped another, bo two bombshells, I, this game needs to slow the hell down, I saw it with my own eyes, I don't believe it. Wait, so who's gonna be the prosecutor? There's no one left! Unless. Mm, oh, I swear to God, if they, if they do what I think they're gonna do. If they do what I think they're gonna do. They're, they're gonna make Kazuma the prosecutor. They're gonna make in the pro- that, that was the foreshadowing. That was the freaking foreshadowing. Okay, remember earlier in the game when we said- <laughs> Clever game. Very clever game. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, there was a flashback to what happened on the, on the SS Barrier on the boat in the second case of the first game, which is a conversation we never had in the first game, but there was flashback to now retroactively. When we were talking to Kazuma about becoming a lawyer, and he was like, Well, one day you, we might see each other in court. Well, I didn't finish it, but he implied it. And then I thought that was odd. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense, because you're, if you're a defense lawyer, and I have a defense lawyer, we would never be on opposite sides unless it was a civil case, which we know those don't exist in Ace Attorney, except in that one instance in Turner Revolution, which even that turned into a criminal case, so <laughs> all boats are off at that point. That's what they're gonna do. That is what they're gonna freaking do. It's gonna be Kazuma. He's gonna stand across from us. He's gonna be the prosecutor. And if I swear to God, if that. If, here's the thing. If you told me that yesterday, I'd been like, nah, they'd never do that. But at this point, Gregson's dead. Von Zeeks is gonna be the, the is gonna be the defendant. At, no, at this point, you may as well summon Larry Butts to the to the to, to the defendant's to the, the defense bench to be the defense attorney. At this point, all bets are off. Oh my God. So you mean, there were actually multiple witnesses? They heard the gunshot apparently, and when our lock got to the scene, there was only the boss and the reaper bloke in the room. But there's no way Lord Vanzies would have taken Gregson's life. I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe it either. But also, also, wait a minute. This is the fourth case. This is case four. There's still an entirely other case to go. They keep blowing their load. How is this game going to end? They, they blow their load in the third case, and then they blow the load again in the fourth case, with Gregson being the victim and Van Zeeks being the defendant. How can you possibly top this in the fifth case? I... This game? Thank you for informing us, Mr. Strade. This really is most terrible news. I'm dreadfully sorry. Why do you say sorry for? It didn't do nothing. Like, at this, you know, ten minutes ago, my biggest concern was why Shomes had blue hair. That's the furthest thing from my mind now. Well, anyway, I'm taking a cab over to the sea right now. Please come in all, as soon as you can. And seeing Gina, like, actually break down and get emotional doesn't help my mental state either right now. What is happening? It's a detective's lot to something or other. To appear with whether some sinister plot has unfolded. Little wonder we all look haggard. Sometimes these things are almost too much for the nerves. Mr. Sholmes? What use is there in being a great detective if I fail to see something like this coming? Hmm? How can I let this happen to Gregson? To Gregson! <laughs> Not now, that's, I can't look at this, nope, don't look at the screen, I can't, I can't, I cannot, I don't, nope, I can't. Those eyes will kill me every time. Come on, get, get off the screen, thank you, okay. I swear to god, those eyes are like poison to me. 
So now with Odo, I shall leave at once to begin my investigations. No, oh, now you, oh, now you stand up. Of course, yes, we will too. It would be helpful if you could talk to Mr. Reaper and see what you can glean. I'm sure you were intending to do so anyway. Until later, then. Ha, ha, ha. Inspector Gregson dead and Lord Von Seeks is arrested. Bruno, Susie. I called you a handsome. It's waiting outside. Thanks, Iris. Shall we, Mr. Sato? Yes. <laughs> what? I can't even. This game is insane. We have flown off the rails, and I'm all here for it. Let, let, let's freaking go. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, the location, where do we even... I don't even... Wait. I feel like before anything else, we need to know as much information as possible. Do we even have it as an option? Oh, okay, we're right down here. Let's go here first. Go here first, and then get as much information as we can. And then we'll go talk to uh, Van Zeeks about it. Remember first, room on Fresno Street. And of course, there's a freaking red clop of hair. This really is an out-of-the-way part of London. I doubt many people find their way down this back street. So this dust-ridden, rented old room is where it happened then. Not again! No, oh, I can't. I swear, I... I'm not kidding, those eyes, they melt, they melt my heart every time I see them, I can't. Get off the screen, please. Okay. Yes, and the police are already hard at work investigating, it seems. I don't see Mr. Sholmes anywhere, though. Yeah, are you surprised by that assertion? Perhaps investigations have taken him elsewhere, such as to bed. Oi, what do you think you're doing there? Every one of them tools got me taken, why is he looking at me and all? I want this piece above the ceiling check, and don't forget to look inside the chimney stack, too. Blimey, and you not never gone over a house looking for a doll when your owners are out of town? Gina's obviously got some unique investigative techniques which she wants everyone to adopt. Well, I mean, it's not exactly a bad idea. Like, someone who has experience with this, who has someone who has her experience will be very valuable in an investigative team. Because she knows where to, she knows where, she knows, she would know how a criminal thinks, and so she would know where to hide things. Like, she, she would know where to look for stuff like this, so. I don't know, man, I feel like she's a valuable asset, but also... Seeing how far she's come. I am just blown away by how much I care about Gina. Like, she was... When she entered the game and case was like, Alright, throw away character. Goodbye, you're out of my mind. Never gonna see you again. But she is... Seeing her develop and grow over cases 3 and 5 and throughout this entire game, just... She's completely taken me by surprise. And just see her, like, stepped up to the plate and, like, boss everyone around her because she cares so much about Gregson, it's... Oh my god... Oh, hi there. Don't give me the dust please. Oh, so you turned up at last. Mind you, I ain't been here long myself. Hello again, Gina. She was just left. Lucky you missed that. How did he just leave when we just... Okay. He went prance around in here, pulling and stuff and flicking that out of his and just scuppered. Oh, he's finished investigating already, you mean? Yeah. He didn't stop saying nothing to no one. Not even me. Gina, would you mind if we investigated too? Listen, Otto. You're a lawyer, right? Um... Yes, why? Well, you're not thinking of trying to help that Reaper bloke, are you? Oh, poor Gina. She's never going to forget, is she? A trial will haunt her forever. Gina, if you don't mind me saying, if Lord Van Seek's really is responsible for this crime, he will be duly and fairly judged in court. I suppose you're right, yeah. Go on, then, Otto. Get investigating. I want to know the truth. What about what really happened here? Thank you, Gina. And don't worry, we will happily acquire that for you one way or another my I'm sorry I'm just I'm still reeling from I, I don't know what to process first too much is happening at once like this this is on par well okay maybe not to that level but it's of similar caliber as if as if gumshoe had been the victim in in turnabout goodbyes and then we investigated or and then we had to defend Edgeworth, like, I, oh, oh my god. I, I'm, I don't even, I don't, I don't have the words. Gina, what was Inspector Gregson doing here in the first place? That's what I want to know. It's, it's what, happy isn't like a lot of the clink. That's why I decided to give up me diving and, be, and become a detective instead. Oh yes, Mr. Shemmons twisted the inspector's arm to agree to take you on as an apprentice, didn't he? Something like that, I think. Anyway, the point is, I didn't really know much about the boss till then. But well, it turns out, he's a bit of a legend of the dark, at the yard. Goodness, really? Well, I mean, thanks to Shum's stories, yeah. And so he managed to solve some really tricky case, just like that. He did? Yep, and ever since then, he started going on all sorts of investigations, but always on his own. 
No one else in the yard even knows what half the cases he's working on are, apparently. That's not how it's supposed to work, is it? So what was this legendary inspector doing in a dingy room like this? I know he had a lot of respect for the Reaper and all, and look where that landed him. Respect for the Reaper? In what way? I haven't said as much. I take my eye out to that fella where it was words. Not how the general public feels, is it? People are terrified of the fella. Yeah, the boss said that's exactly why he respected the bloke. I didn't really realize Gregson had held the Reaper in such quite such high, quite, 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 quite such high regard. He said something else to me and all. But I didn't need to worry about the Reaper, because he only got lots of other people were bad. It did kind of set me in mind at ease when he said that. Right. Okay, I don't even... What is this place then? Does anyone live here? Apparently it's been rented by some cove called Hugh Bone. Hugh Bone? It's a sort of here today gone tomorrow name that, isn't it? Yeah, it's what we call an unidentified person. We haven't been able to get in touch with him. I see. Well, I'm judging from appearances, I'd have to say this place hasn't been lived in for a long time, if ever. What? All the lads from the yard piled down to get stuck into the investigation, but there's so little here, no one knew what to do with themselves. I do wonder. Yes, Mr. Sato? Well, could it be that this Hugh Boone is in fact Inspector Gregson himself? What? How could that be? Well, if he was investigating on his own, it's quite possible that this was in fact some kind of secret office of his. I never even considered that. Let's work, Suze. We're actually following a line of inquiry like that ourselves. You are? If you look around the room, you'll see. There's a few things that hint at it. We should really investigate this place in detail. Now, first, we've got to actually talk to you about everything. I see that's where the poor inspector was found over there. Yeah, that's right. They said it was a single bullet what did him in. Apparently, the bullet went right through him and struck the counter tree in the wall. And hit those two... It destroyed two of the candles and not the third one. That's interesting. It's an interesting angle for it to have had to hit. And the gun is there on the floor. It's the Reapers, isn't it? No denying that. What? Really? How do you know that? Take it easy! I, I don't know what to do with myself when you stare at me with them big, wide eyes. Yeah, neither do the rest of us. Her Susano's eyes are famous for melting people. I'm going to say what I've heard. I don't, I don't know much about guns myself. But there's some bigwig lawman or whatever who said so. Why don't you ask him? A bigwig lawman, is it? Anyway, a friend of the street runs along under that window there. There were some street sellers just decided who heard the gunshot. Oh, but I don't recall seeing anybody outside. Yeah, they've all been taken down in the yard for question, that's why. We're talking about the yard's legendary inspector here, after all. They'll be getting a grill in. You think we might be able to speak with those street sellers ourselves? I doubt it. The lads of the yard will just want to know what you're stooping for, and you'll be up for grilling and all. So we can't interview the witnesses then. Shame. Okay, well, that's all for you. So now... Now it's time to get to work, and, uh, okay, so, my, actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to check, because I don't, my first, honestly, the first thought I had was, I wonder if this is where, if this is, like, daily vigils, home away from home kind of thing, and that'd be easy to check, because all I have to do is just check this frame. If this frame has her picture in it, then the answer, then that answers my question. Oh, it's a photograph stand. I suppose it must be a picture of one of Inspector Gregson's family members. Ah! Is it her? Is it her? There, look, Mr. Naruhoto, quickly! Yep, that, I, that's what I, 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 that's what I told you. What if this woman is familiar somehow? Of course she's familiar. You met her only this morning. Ah, it's, 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 this is Vigil. This makes no sense. Why would there be a picture of Mrs. Vigil in here? Hmm, I wonder. To be frank, I don't think I've ever been more stumped, re really. I'm sorry to say, I have no idea. Yeah, but, but, but. Really? You, let's think about this for a second. Maybe you, you suggested this might have been Inspector Gregson's office. What? Let's just transfer the person who who owns the office to someone else there and see if that logic checks out, especially when now we have that photo here. Like, uh, oh boy. Also, I like how apparently Daily Vigil was prepping for a zombie apocalypse with the... So, okay, so he's preparing for a zombie apocalypse by boarding up the windows, but didn't board up the win the, the one part of the window here that's been smashed through. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a coincidence at all. Somebody's very haphazardly nailed those boards over the broken glass, haven't they? You couldn't even really call it a window anymore. Well, if you remember the window in Mr. Natsume's room, that was totally blocked up with bricks. This one does at least let in some light. You could say nothing more about it. I'm starting to feel even more sorry for Mr. Natsume now. Well, he's back home now, so he's, he's doing fine. 
Okay, so also, I see, is that blood on the candle, or is that just because it's, it's it's been destroyed? Top of one of the candles in this candle holder has been completely blown off. I guess there was this wax splattered along the wall behind, look. As suppose if a bullet had hit it. It does seem likely that the bullet hit the candle, having first passed through the inspector's body. Ugh. Now that wax on the wall looks like blood to me. I mean, uh, to be honest, I kind of thought that it, that's what it looked like as well. But, you know. Also, I guess it's worth pointing out the, the red-haired league. Ever since we came in here, I can't take my eyes off this thing. Oh! Funnily enough, neither can I. It's a hairpiece, isn't it? It is! It is! A bright red hairpiece! I suppose the fact that it's right there next to where the body was found means we have to accept that Inspector Gregson wore wigs, does it? Y you just... Okay. And it's such a flame color red, too. That's the color we've come across very recently elsewhere, isn't it? Exactly! This is a vital clue, I'm sure of it! Alrighty then. Yeah, I... I don't know, I... I'm... I can't wait to find out what how, how the red-haired league is tied into all. I mean, we can infer that that Daily might have had some involvement if it, if, if this is in here because I, I don't I don't I'm, unless Gregson was going undercover in the red-haired league. I don't know why this would I don't know. It just it's, it's either Daily's or Gregson's, but since we know that Gregson lived here, I'm I'm leaning towards Daily. I guess it could still be Gregson, but I guess we'll find out later. But for now, let's uh let's examine the actual murder weapon. Seems like a good thing to do. This is presumably the motor weapon then. Oh, oh my! It is real, I suppose? I think so. Guns are so rare in Japan, I really know very little about them. There's one way to know for sure, Mr. Naruto. Fire uh, you be a bit... How about, how about we... No, how about we don't do that? No, 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 no! If I do that, I'd be looking for a skilled lawyer to represent me in court. Slightly safer just to ask someone who might know, I think. Yeah, let's... Uh, hey, I wonder if it's... I wonder, if, I wonder how we can tell if it's a real gun. Oh, I know! Fire a shot! What could possibly go wrong? Ugh, and then the final point of interest. Just... Just why? Oh, what's this? It would appear to be a little model policeman. It's rather charming, isn't it? In a way. Seeing as it's on the floor here, do you think it belonged to Inspector Gregson? You really... Uh, you found the picture of Evil of AV Vigil on the p desk and you still don't... Okay. It's a little hard to imagine Lord Van Zeke's playing with something like this. It's only about eight centimeters tall. Could have fallen out of someone's pocket, I suppose. I think we should record it as evidence, just in case. Yes, I agree. It, it is rather delightful, after all, in a way. Alrighty then. Well, I think we inspected everything here that we possibly can, so... I'm gonna just... I guess we should probably go talk to Lord Van Zeke's. Get a, we've, we've got some evidence here. If I miss something, we'll come back later, but I think we've about run our course there. Hey there, Von Zeeks. Did not think I'd be seeing you here at any point in this game. There he is. Lord Von Zeeks behind bars. So it's true. He really was arrested. He's sitting with his back to the wall, reading something. I don't think he's noticed us. Um, Lord Von Zeeks. Fancy meeting you here. The last place on earth I'd like to be, with the last person on earth I'd like to see. I couldn't very well I couldn't very well not come. We heard what happened. That you that Inspector Gregson was Go home. This has nothing to do with you. Yeah the last time a prosecutor told us to go home and that they didn't want us involved with the case, we didn't listen. And and we were right not to listen, so we won't be listening here either. But Forgive me, Lord Van Zeeks, but I must disagree. Inspector Gregson was very helpful to us on a number of occasions. We're indebted to him. At the very least, we owe it to him to find out the truth about his death. You must help us with our investigations, please. There's really nothing I can tell you. What were you just reading in the back of the cell there? Was it something related to the case? This? This yard. The yard isn't quite so cavalier with its information as to share case details with a suspect. That is... A letter from an old acquaintance. Oh, who might that be? Someone you know, as it happens. Albert Hairbrain. Of course, yes. I keep forgetting they went to the same university. And I would like to read my correspondence in peace. So let's get this over with, shall we? What is it you want to know? Take a, take a wild guess, buddy. I mean, let's face it. 
Lord Van Zeeks never menses his words, but they seem to have less bite than usual somehow. I imagine that that that's par for the course when you get arrested for a murder you didn't commit. I imagine you're a, a bit less there's a bit less bite to your bark. Uh, if you know what I mean. Can you at least tell us your side of the story, Lord Van Zeeks? What happened? How much do you already know? We know that the inspector was shot dead in a small rented room on Fresno Street, and that you were found out by the police when they arrived on the scene and immediately arrested. We were told that there was nobody else in the room, and that some witnesses heard the gunshot. Then you're well informed, and there's really nothing I can add. The truth is, I don't know what happened myself. But the gunshot! Obviously you didn't fire the gun, did you? I'm not in the habit of shooting the people I work alongside. I also heard the noise, however. Before I had a chance to investigate, I was apprehended by the arriving officers. So he doesn't actually know what happened. If I might ask, what were you doing in that place to begin with? I don't need to answer that. Oh! After all, you're not representing me. <laughs> you don't know how these games work, do you? He is going to need a lawyer, though. Yeah, and that lawyer is going to end up being me. Because you don't know how these games work. Who is going to be representing you in court, Lord Van Zeeks? Anyone other than you, I should imagine. Ha 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 Hey, remember all the times we off against you in court and I crushed your ass? Yeah. You might want me on your team. Would I be right in assuming that you... have no representation as yet? Defense lawyers shy away from any trial involving the Reaper, as I'm sure you know. But this is different. In my career of all the defendants I've prosecuted, only 19 have ever been acquitted. Of them, 16 subsequently died in mysterious circumstances. Questions will be asked now. Surely not! I assure you, no defense lawyer will want to touch me with the end of a barge pole. But you didn't actually have anything to do with those people's deaths, did you? It's been 10 years now that I've been known as the Reaper of the Bailey. Believe me, nobody wants to know the true identity of the killer more than I, however. It seems things may come to a head before I have the chance to uncover the truth about that. What does he mean by that? Okay, so I guess we can ask about the letter. What's... What's there? After the trial, perhaps the hairband was supposed to go straight back to Germany, I thought. It's a letter to inform me of his safe arrival at home. I arranged this passage by sea and rail. It's a relief, I must say. He should now be beyond the reach of the Reaper. Because the Reaper doesn't follow people abroad, you mean? Yes, so it seems. Your stooped little Nipponese friend, for example. You told me he was keeping well in Japan when I inquired the other day. Yes, that's right. He's an author now, happily working in Tokyo. So Professor Hairbrain is safely back in Germany now. He is. Okay, so let's get to the part where you, where you let us be your defense lawyer and then we move on with our lives. So, it appears our conversation has run dry. There was a two second silence, that's all. Well, in any event, if you'll excuse me now, I wouldn't like to detain you. I was wondering, Lord Van Zeeks, if you'd like, I'd be happy to advocate for you. You trust me, do you? Uh, yes. I didn't until about one case ago. Because I gotta be honest, I've made it no secret for a long time... Wasn't a big fan of Von Zeeks, because with every other game in the series, by the end of that, by the time the credits rolled, I came around to the prosecutor. Apollo Justice doesn't exist. We're not counting that game. But Edgeworth, Francisca, Godot, obviously. E even if we count, like, ugh, I, I, I am reluctant to actually call the best a prosecutor, but by name, and he technically was, so... Even DeBest came around, honestly, his character work in that final case was phenomenal, so he came, he came, he came around by the end, that was, that was exceptional. Uh, Simon Blackwell, Nayuda, to some extent, yes, but by the end of the first game of The Chronicles, still wasn't really a big fan of Von Zeke's, but once Case 3 rolled around and he was kind of on our team, and then that epilogue scene happened, I don't know, man, I've... Started to, started, to warm up, started to warm up to him a little more. So, uh, yes. I trust you. For I've heard you speak many times in court. I've seen how you treat people. So I'm quite sure that you would never have taken another's life. It's just... My feelings can't be used as evidence in a court of law, sadly. 
Well, then, uh, wait around, just you wait until Athena slice enters the picture. It's a very gracious offer. However, I trust no one. What? Not the police, not the judiciary, and not you Nipponese. But please! I have no intention of engaging your services. Yeah, well, we know that's bullshit. The chasm between us is just too wide and too deep, it seems. Yeah, you remember all those times I whooped your ass in court? Yeah, you kind of want me on your team. I'd appreciate it if you don't visit again. Then neither of us will waste any more time. Perhaps we need to dig a little deeper and find out more about Lord Van Zeeks and what happened to Inspector Gregson. Alright, well, my next stop is going to be to go to Lord Strongheart and figure out if he knows anything about what's going on here because he his character design just reeks of evilness. So, he's got to know something. And if he doesn't, I'll be astounded. You've made good time. Kazuma. Kazuma, he's here. Oh no, their voices are too similar. Oh god damn it, what do I do now? Um, I took an express train back to London. I can hear Lord Strongheart. Can you? Yes, it sounds like he's talking to someone. Ca yep, called it. Is everything in place? I had a private compartment on the train so I could check all the paperwork. It's... Kazuma-sama! He's always talking to someone. Every time we come here, he's always talking to someone. Ah. Uh. Ah, Perry the Platypus, your timing is impeccable. And by impeccable, I mean completely impeccable. Your timing is impeccable. It... it is? No doubt you have heard the sickening news. About the Reaper's latest devilry? Yes. I'm sure you don't believe it, of course, Lord, the Lord Strongheart. That Lord Van Zeeks could have done such a thing to Inspector Gregson? I believe only in the facts. And the facts in this case point to one thing. The unavoidable accuser of Lord Van Zeeks for this crime. We must bring charges against the Reaper for taking the life of our legendary detective. Oh no! Surely not! It's a truly regrettable situation. Tomorrow, the Forensic Science Symposium finally begins. At the very least, though, we can show the world our justice system's swift and equitable processes. So does that mean the trial is tomorrow? Precisely. And the prosecutor is standing right behind me. In fact, this is a fine opportunity for introductions. Say it. Kazuma. Say it. I dare you. Ah, but of course. You're already acquainted, aren't you? Mr. Osogi here will be present at tomorrow's proceedings. Say it. God damn it. Say the words. Leading the... Called it! Freaking called it! Yes! But also, like, no! Ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait. What? Kazuma! As I'm sure you're aware... He's a very capable practitioner of law. Kazuma-sama, as a prosecutor? <laughs> Freaking called it. Freaking called it. I told you, man. Anything goes. Nothing's off the table. I. <laughs> this is case four. This is case four. We still have an entire fifth case to go. Oh my god. What do we- I'm sure you can imagine that tomorrow's trial will be closely followed all over London. In fact, no. People all over the Empire will be watching closely to see how it unfolds. There's no salvation for anyone on the trial prosecuted by the Reaper of the Bailey. And now, the Reaper himself must stand in the dock. Quite so. The public want answers about the Reaper. Answers about how and why those who escaped conviction subsequently died of mysterious deaths. But Lord Van Seeks- firmly denies any involvement in such matters. And, and there have been thorough investigations that have proven him to be innocent. That's certainly true. Or, it has been at least, until now. Ah! No, tomorrow's trial will mark the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial, great judicial history. You're gonna, you wanna get, oh, that's what this is, oh, so you wanna get rid of him. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. You wanna get rid of him for some reason. I don't know why, but you want, that, you, you wanna get rid of him. 
So Kazuma will be prosecuting tomorrow? That's right. But he's, you know, I don't want to reference Marvel because I'm still pissed about the fact that Loki destroyed the MCU. But I, I, honestly, I think at this point I'm just going to like pretend that show isn't canon and it never existed because I care too much about those first three, about the, the, the characters and the stories of those first three phases. So I'm going to reference Marvel here. I'm getting a strong sense of like when the win the Captain America the Winter Soldier. I don't want to spoil it for any of you who have not watched that movie yet and plan to. But if you've seen it and you think about what just got revealed five about 10 seconds ago in regards to the prosecution and the defense, you kind of know what I'm getting at here. I'm getting a very strong Winter Soldier vibe here and Especially considering the fact that he had Kozuma had amnesia and didn't remember anything. Hmm, gotten a strong sense of that. Oh god, almighty! This game, this game, this is just insanity. It's it's case four, guys. It's case four. You gotta you gotta pace yourselves, guys. You're not gonna have anything left for case five. What is gonna be case five? Accomplished young law practitioners cannot pick and choose their roles. And imagine what it will mean for the prosecution to know the strategies commonly employed by the defense. A devastating combination, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I've no doubt at all that Kazuma will be razor sharp as a prosecutor. Okay, yeah, re Uno reverse card. We know his tactics. Because he has as much experience with us as we have with him. He's only been- we've only been in one trial together, unless you count the third chapter. But he, he didn't remember us at that point, so... That doesn't really matter. We, we've only stood in one trial together, and that's in the first game. Again, discounting case three of this game. So, we kind of have equal amounts of knowledge about each other. But, why Kazuma-sama? There are surely many other highly skilled prosecutors in Great Britain. It, wa it was a personal request. I asked to be assigned to the trial. Y you asked for this? But why? It'll all become clear tomorrow. I'm guessing you intend to stand for the defense, don't you? Although, the Reaper appears to be turning down all offers of representation. I'm surprised such a personal... Uh, uh, personal request would have been upheld. It seems unprecedented. Quite exceptional, in fact. You are quite right, Miss Mikotaba. Tomorrow's trial will be unprecedented and exceptional in every way. Ah, uh, after all, the accused is one of Britain's greatest prosecutors, the pride of the Empire. It would be unwise to give the public a reason to perceive it as the judiciary closing ranks. So that's why you're happy to let a fool in handle the prosecution? Rinosuke, let's see how your skills have been honed after practicing law in this land for so many months. Kazuma, I... I don't understand why you're being so hostile to me now. This isn't going to end well, my friend. <laughs> oh, yes, we noticed that there was a gun on the scene of Inspector Gregson's death. Do you know if it belongs to Lord Van Zeeks? That would be a question for the lead detective investigating the scene. Well, that thing, the thing is, she wasn't sure, so she told me that I should ask so many higher up who might know. That's right, Mr. Narahono, be direct! It's certainly a model that's issued to all personnel involved in law enforcement, yes. Which includes prosecutors, as I'm sure you can imagine. Does it include chief justices? In that case, it could have, it could actually belong to the victim. No, Gregson had his gun on his person. What about Lord Van Zeeks? He claims it's currently not in his possession. What? According to his story, he lost it. In short, it's more than a little suspicious. But just because the gun is in question, is, this, is the, the gun in question the same type as the defendant's? There's no proof that it's actually his. No, of course not. Nevertheless, the situation is great for Lord Van Zeeks. Hey, Kazuma, why did you become the Winter Soldier? It's just a question that I would ask. I'm sorry for all the worry I've caused you, but it'll be alright now. Has your memory completely returned? Yes, completely. I remember everything. Including what I was coming here to do. Right. <laughs> Not the eyes! Kazuma-sama, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you alive and well like this. But... How did you come to be here in London when you were suffering from amnesia? It was the voice. 
this past year, I've been hearing it in my head constantly, saying the same thing over and over again. Go to London. That's where your destiny awaits. It was that voice that guided me here to London. <laughs> I'm so sorry for what's happened. Anyway, my memory might have returned to me. But there's something that won't return to the way it was before. Huh? What do you mean? I'm a prosecutor now. So I'm sure our paths will cross again very soon. What is this game? It doesn't look like we're going to glean much more here. Well, thank you very much, Lord Strongheart. Remember, tomorrow's trial will go down in our Empire's history. There's much you could learn from the public gallery. Uh, sorry to have taken up so much of your time. We'll see ourselves out. Oh. Before you go, Inosuke. Oh, what is it, Kazuma? I just wanted to thank you. Kazuma-sama, what? You took my determination to heart and brought it with you over the ocean in my steed. And you carried out my role to perfection. You always were intent on studying British law in order to change your own justice system. It was your dream! Your Mr. Naruhoto didn't want that to die with you! Turns out, nothing died with you! Yes. But I had another purpose for coming here. Oh! I actually have a favor to ask. Yeah, well, people haven't had much luck with asking me for, to do favors for them, so we'll see if you have better luck. This trial I'll be prosecuting tomorrow. I'd like you to be there to see how it ends. Right in front of me, as the defense counsel. Why? What's this all about? I know you have what it takes. But, Lord Van Zeeks would never put his faith in my- Yeah, so, remember earlier when I was talking about how I, I said it's gonna- we're gonna be facing off against Kazuma? Because you know damn well he's going to accept us as his- as his client. Like, there's- there's no question, there's no suspense there. It's obviously he's gonna- he's gonna accept us as a client. Obviously, it just- we're just waiting- we're just waiting for him to come to his senses. On the contrary, he recognizes your talent. He does? It's not easy to see behind the facade sometimes. Here, have a look at this. Okay, he looks like he's being forced to smile. That, that, that looks like it's- that looks- that is like the picture- that, that's like textbook definition of someone has a gun to my head. So I'm being forced to smile. This is what humans do, right? They smile like this? Like that- that this screams gun to my head, just shoot me now kind of thing. That's- that's Lord Vansky's Inspector Gregson! In a photograph that must have been taken some time ago by the look of it. And who's the third person? I'm gonna guess it's his brother. He was displayed very prominently in the detective's office. In Gregson's office, you mean? Yes. What I'm trying to say is, if you really think you can trust the Reaper, you might find that some straight talking makes him take a different view. Take it. Thanks. I don't understand. Why are you giving me this? Just hurry, Ryunosuke. Visiting hours of the prison are almost over. What are you doing, Kazuma? Also, I know I'm saying it wrong, it's supposed to be Kazuma, but I've said it for Kazuma so long, it's like muscle memory at this point. I know it doesn't make sense because it's a mental thing, but you know what I mean. I've said it that way for so long, it's, it's hard to readjust. Anyway. Okay. Hey, Van Zeeks. Your life is at risk. Can you please let us defend you? Oh, I, I have a new photo. Maybe if I show you the photo, you'll you'll come to your senses. Lord Van Zeeks is still reading that letter. We've been gone quite some time, though. He's an incredibly slow reader. Or either, either he's an incredibly slow reader. Or it's an incredibly long letter. I might even be able to read English faster than he can. I was intending to ignore you entirely. But I can't turn a deaf ear to such an insulting nip on these. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't think you'd hear that. I had the case notes brought to me in secret. I was reading them to pass the time. Yes, we heard that your trial's set for tomorrow. Which is none of your business. It's gonna become our business in just a second here. So have you found a lawyer? How many times must I reiterate the same thing? This is nothing to do with you. In other words, no. We were just talking to Lord Strongheart and the prosecutor for your trial's been decided. I'd expect nothing less. Though I have no idea who it is, it's 
Going to be Kazuma Asogi. Asogi? That, that made the color drain from his face. Ha. Huh. Well then. It seems I'm going to have to engage in conversation with you again after all. Yeah. So before we do that, um... Take that, please. Lord Van Zeeks, we came by this old photograph. Well, where did you get that? It was taken when I became a qualified prosecutor. It's almost unbelievable. I assumed it was long lost. Um, is that man on the left there? Yes, that's my brother. Yeah, I mean, I, it was kind of obvious. Like, we, we, we just kind of assumed that that was going to be who it was. Also, we haven't examined any evidence. Um, I, I've made it a, I, I made it a rule that we, we examine everything. I haven't actually done that, so we should probably examine some of this stuff. So, uh, I guess we'll just go... I guess we'll start... I doubt there's anything hidden here. Although, if there is... I can't find anything out of place. Okay, I, I didn't... I, I, I didn't... Oh, oh, I guess we can check the head, maybe. Does the head come off? The helmet of this charming policeman appears to be a little worse for wear. I'm not convinced about the charming part, but yes, you're right. The head part looks like it's been fairly heavily manhandled. Almost as if somebody has enjoyed twisting it around and around for fun. Pop it off. Pop it off. Shall we try twisting it around and around too? For fun. Pop it off. What's inside? Oh! Ah! What's that? It appears to be some sort of key. But it's it's tiny though. It couldn't be a key for a door. Not that size. So what is it for, I wonder? Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well, I mean, not- I expected the head to come off and, like, pop out. Kind of like, I don't know, like, it pops off. Actually, I guess kind of like the- the knockoff version of Turbo Man in Jingle All The Way. Like, the head comes off and it's because it's busted or whatever. Something like that, I don't know. I expected it to pop off and reveal a secret apartment. In. I didn't expect it to be a key. Weird. Uh, the gun... It's probably something hidden in the gun. So this is the type of revolver that's not an issue. Yes, and when I asked about whether the records are kept about who they're issued to, I was told that for the past five years, they've been engraved with a unique serial number. Oh, but as far as I can tell, there's nothing like that on this gun. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Just that it must have been issued longer ago than that. Also, I guess I, I wonder, can I, oh, it's gone? That's weird. The key was the, the keyhole was there a second ago. Okay, now it's there. Okay. So what I wanted to see if I could examine the actual key itself. Or at least the part of the key. Can I? Okay, I can. I, I wanted to check to see if there's anything more. Like if, if we can twist it more. It looks like some sort of key. Yes, it does. A very tiny and simple key. What's a little key doing inside of figuring a policeman in the first place? And what's it for? Alright, that didn't get us anywhere. I was hoping it might get us somewhere useful, but it Evidently, it did not get us anywhere useful. Anyway, well, it was worth a shot. I, I feel like that's... I, I think that's probably as much investigated or examinations of the stuff that we can do. So, I guess I'll just... Leave. I mean, I guess... Something in the photo... Oh, okay, we, never mind. We can't, 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 can't even examine that. Alright, well. Worth a shot. Apparently this, picture, apparently, this picture was prominently displayed in Gregson's office. He had a deep respect for you, you know? Respect? That's... Nonsense. No, we've heard someone attest to it very clearly. Inspector Gina Lestrade, no less. Well, maybe once, yes. There was a time when things were like that. We were brothers in arms, jovially discussing the future of justice and other lofty subject matter. There was a nice glimpse of the past. I thank you. I feel as though I got a nice glimpse of the past then, too. There was a glimmer of light in his eyes, a brief twinkle. An insight into the true nature of this man, known to all of the stone-cold Reaper of the Bailey. Alright, we're just chipping away at the ice. Chipping away at the ice. Ten years ago, my older brother, who was the director of prosecutions at the time, was murdered. And the killer, as you know, was a visiting student from the Far East. Not a single day goes by when I don't curse the name Asogi. Genshin Asogi was Kazuma-sama's father. Thanks, I got that. So what cruel twist of fate is this now? Ten years later, the man's son is to crucify me in some kangaroo court. I still don't understand why Lord Stronghold apprenticed uh, Kazuma to you. It's what he does. No doubt he knew of the young man's true identity from the outset. 
but what could he have been hoping to achieve? And let's not forget that it was only eight days ago that Kazuma recovered from his amnesia. Why would Lord Strong have assigned this trial to somebody like that? Asogi, that name is the very epitome of my bane. The bane that is you, Nipponese. Right. I'd only just been appointed as a prosecutor when it happened ten years ago. My brother Clint, the director of prosecutions, was hunting down a mass murderer. The so-called professor. Assigned to the investigation as his partner was a certain visiting student dispatched from Scotland Yard. And that was Genshin Asogi? Exactly. I developed a deep respect for the man. He seemed noble-minded and chivalrous in the extreme to me. But none of us saw the true nature of the man. So I lost everything when it happened. My esteemed brother, the people I believed in, and any semblance of right prevailing over wrong. Oh, how awful. To avenge my brother, I prosecuted Nasogi's trial. It wouldn't ordinarily have been allowed, but I be beleaguered the ascribed prosecutor until he consented. What do you mean by the ascribed prosecutor? The man in charge of the Professor Case Inquiry. Oh! Oh, how interesting. How wonderfully interesting. Hmm. 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 I wonder if you stealing a spotlight from him had anything to do with anything. W wait, what? Lord Strongheart? He was a highly accomplished prosecutor, but he agreed to relinquish the trial to me and act as my advisor instead. Since that time, He's the one person to whom I felt indebted. I'm sure he must have seen your zeal for the case and recognized your potential as a prosecutor. Yeah, that's what he did. Anyway, time passed, but then earlier this year, who should arrive in London but you? Ah! And, of all things, as a lawyer. Sorry? I felt your animosity the first time I ever faced you in the courtroom. Your obvious deep loathing of us Japanese. I kept telling myself it was illogical, but for so many years, that hatred had festered inside me, I could no longer control it. And I can understand why, now I know the history. But in the same way that I've long felt the Nipponese to be the bane of my life, to Kazuma Asogi, I am the bane of his, the reaper who sent his father to the gallows. He's looking for revenge, and he intends to take it in court tomorrow. Mmm, I don't know about that, but I guess we'll see what happens. At this, like I said, man, anything goes, nothing's off the table, anything can happen at this point. Gregson's transport to the Paris Police Prefecture had been finally arranged for the coming month. But he'll never make it to France now. It's a, it's a tragedy. Oh yes, come to think of it, he did mention something about that, didn't he? I wonder, does it happen often? Being turned internationally, I mean. It's the first time I've ever encountered it. Oh! The Paris police welcoming an English detective is almost inconceivable. I can't imagine what kind of magic Gregson must have worked to put that arrangement in place. It sounds like a mystery has even the Reaper perplexed. I'm afraid to say that we were very ignorant about Inspector Gregson's standing. You we hear that he was considered something of a legend at Scotland Yard? I mean, given his... Uh, didn't we kind of... I thought, I thought the whole thing was that, like, everyone loves him because of the way he was written in Iris' stories. I thought we kind of already knew that. Again, it was ten years ago that he first made a name for himself. By uncovering a decisive piece of evidence that exposed Percy's identity. If it wasn't for Gregson's singular approach to the case, the discovery would never have been made. What sort of approach? After my brother's life was taken, the inspector pushed for a full autopsy. Oh my! Ten years ago? Why is that so surprising? Autopsy was considered a desecration of the body at the time, and rarely performed, and my brother was of course noble. That made the idea of it even more unthinkable. But something Gregson had dug up in his investigations made him determine it was necessary. His powerful conviction somehow influenced the House of Lords, and as a result, I could avenge my brother's death. So, you must have had great confidence in the Inspector's abilities then. And it's even more conceivable that you would have taken his life! Inspector Gregson. No, oh, not that! I, I hit it more than I wanted to. Hit it twice instead of once, now I gotta wait for this thing to loop around again. 
Unfortunately... Oh, that's one thing. So, I've been... I spent my, a, a good chunk of my day today playing the original trilogy, not for fun, just, like, skipping through all the text to, uh, to record some clips of certain characters for... something that I'm making for YouTube that you'll see eventually. Uh, and, and I'm just... I, I, I gotta say, I much prefer... If I have one critique of this package of games, is that it's... The tick rate is set, like, the frame rate's at 30 FPS and not 60 FPS like the original trilogy was. Because I gotta say, the response time of being able to, like, progress through statements faster and just not having to wait as long between animations for things to pop up and, and the response time being faster at 60 FPS and the, just, like, the menus moving at 60 FPS, just everything. Kind of missed that. Gotta be honest. It kind of... Oh, also, I did confirm that, uh... It was a thing in the original trilogy that you could do this, press up and down to move between the pages. I did confirm that that was a thing you could do as, as well. Anyway, I just, just felt like pointing that out. Okay, now let's talk to her about, about your gun. I bought the gun used to shoot the inspector that was found on the scene. Uh, yes. That's not mine. Really? Because, because everyone seems to think that it is. What do you expect me to say to that? Lord Strongheart informs us that you claim to have misplaced your firearm. As embarrassing as that is, I'm afraid it's true. When did you when did you lose it then? That I don't know. Oh! I was issued with a revolver when I first became a prosecutor ten years ago. I must have stowed it somewhere, I suppose. Or left it somewhere, perhaps. You have some you have something in common with Lord Van Zeke's after all, Mr. Narhoto. A talent for misplacing things. No 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 no, this has nothing to do with me! Don't drag me into it! Don't make the mistake of associating me with this Nipponese! Oh dear. The rift is very wide, isn't it? So it's not decisive evidence, clearly. But it doesn't look good, that's for sure. Mr. Narahodo, sir. Oh, that's the first time he's ever used my actual name. I've lost all confidence in my country's justice system. I don't trust the police. Good start. The judiciary or lawyers. But there's still one thing I'm willing to believe in. What's that? That which you see in the eyes of another across the courtroom. A simple determination to know the truth. L Lord Van Zeeks! From the very first time we clashed in the Bailey almost a year ago now, I couldn't deny it, even though I dearly wished I could. Here is a loathsome Nipponese who has absolute integrity as a lawyer. There are only two other men I've known with that same look in their eyes. My brother, Clint. And Genshin Asogi. The man he idolized and the man who betrayed his trust in the most hideous way. When you showed me that photograph just now, it reminded me. You mean, this photograph? Back then I was able to laugh. I was free of the shackles of mistrust that plague me now. I looked to the future with hope. Since then, I have protected myself against betrayal by refusing to trust anyone. But at times, the mire into which I've sunk makes it almost impossible to breathe. I'm so sorry. So, Mr. Narahodo, I want to believe in that look in your eyes. I need to believe in it. In tomorrow's trial, will you advocate for me? Of course I will. It would be an honor. I'm so pleased, Mr. Narahodo. Then my life is in your hands. Damn handies. I love these characters. For Lord Van Zeeks, that must have been an incredibly hard thing to ask. Which is why I simply cannot let the man down. Tomorrow, in the Old Bailey, against my old friend, Kazuma. Is that it? Is that to be continued? HOLY SHIT! <laughs> A gentle reminder, this is case four! This is case four! How do you set the stakes this high in case four? We still have an entire fifth case to go, and in case four, we are defending Barak Von Zeeks, 
in the murder of D Tobias Gregson being pr in a case that's being prosecuted by Kazuma Asogi. How do you get higher than that? <sighs> I don't know, man. But all I'll say is that tomorrow is going to be one hell of a trial. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for next time. And hope to catch you all tomorrow for the continuation of, gr of the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Goodbye.